This thing has changed my life. I'm gonna show you how to install it right now. This is what I've been using for my iPhone mount in my Ford pickup, and it's inadequate. Number one, it's in the CD holder, rendering the CD player unusable. Not that I ever use that. Number two, it's super low, so it's dangerous. If I look down here, I can't see the road. And number three, it's just plasticky and, and wimpy. Going down the road, it does that, and it falls out like all the time. I've got an iPhone 13 Pro Max, and the thing is, it's just way too heavy for this thing. But I found a solution that's gonna solve all my problems at once. Not only will my iPhone be mounted securely, but it will also be mounted above the dashboard, closer to eye level, allowing me to look out the window at the same time if I need to glance at my phone. It will also give me the ability to mount my GoPro and my tire pressure monitoring system on the same mounting system, which will be super nice. This is from Bullet Point Mounting Solutions. It looks just like this when it's installed. Let me show you what comes in the boxes. We've got some pretty simple instructions here. You got some sweet stickers, how to contact them, and basically pretty much all the tools you'll need. You'll need actually an, a, a drill to use that, but you've got all the tools and screws you need to get this thing set up. And I ordered some things that you may or may not need. I have a GoPro, so I've got this GoPro mount. The cool thing about this is you can put multiple devices, up to three devices on it. And so this is for my GoPro. And here's what the actual mounting system itself looks like. Pretty heavy duty, I think it's aluminum. These two ball heads here for mounting the standard features. And then you've got this space here where you can screw in another device. And I'm gonna use this probably to hold my tire pressure monitor. So on this side, I plan on having my iPhone tire pressure monitor and on this side, the GoPro. So that's pretty cool. And in here we have more sweet stickers. And this is actually pretty cool because I have a fat phone. I always have fat phones. I've got cards on the back and stuff. And this is a heavy duty clip for a big phone. I've never tried this one before, but my phone is always falling out. And in fact, look how big my phone is. It's, uh, it's pretty huge. It's the iPhone 13 Pro Max with this case on the back. And it'd be nice not to take that case off. Let's see if it'll hold it. And pretty heavy duty springy stuff. This is this is heavy duty, man. I, this is what I've needed for my truck because that plastic thing is just, is just terrible. So I go like that and yeah, no problem. Holds that thing very securely, even super fat and thick. So that is exactly what I need. I've got a couple other boxes, some of the uh, additional parts I need. This will hold a standard iPhone. So I actually ordered both of these because my wife has a smaller phone when she's driving. We just pop that thing in and that should be super easy to pop in and out. And I don't think my phone will fit on this. Let's just, let's try. Actually, my phone fits on that. If I just pop the case off, which this thing's magnetic, so it works, I could use this one as well. With my credit card case, I could use that one. Without the credit card case, I could use that one. And these are both like heavy duty metal, which is precisely what I need. Lastly, we have this third box, which has all of the pieces for the arm. This is the arm that mounts onto here so you can have your phone coming out this way. Now that we've seen what's here, let's go install it. Installation is pretty simple. It's really only four screws mounted here. And yes, you are gonna be drilling screws in your Ford truck, but it'll make it so much more useful. It's totally worth it. The first thing I suggest you do is mount all of your devices onto the mounting system and check to make sure everything lines up exactly so you can know exactly where to position it. Mounting onto the system is simple. It comes with the ball joints already here and you just screw these things till they loosen up and you put them over the ball joints and screw them on. That's it for the stuff that is part of the system. For my tire pressure monitoring system, I needed a third party mounting bracket that looks like this. Notice it doesn't fit exactly, but it is close enough and I just grabbed a couple screws and screwed it into here. You could easily cut this off if you wanted to and screw into the mounting bracket. So you'd have four screws holding it in place, but two is gonna be adequate. Somebody may make one of these that fits precisely, but this is what I found. There's a link for it below. If you know of one that fits exactly, go ahead and post that in the comments below. Next, you wanna pull this rubber mat out of the center console. Mine comes out pretty easily with a couple fingernails. Then you wanna take the bracket with all of your hardware on it 
and put it exactly where you want it. For me, I want it mounted all the way in the flush because it makes everything more accessible. Next, I'm gonna pull all of my devices on here and then mark where I want to drill holes into this center plastic plate. And let me just show you, taking them off is pretty easy. Unscrew, and you probably have to take them all the way off so you don't crack them. Actually, no, I was able to pop it all the way off without taking the screw all the way out. I just had this one finger tied in here, so I'm just gonna pop these screws off. Here's just some simple reality. It's really hard to get to the front screw since I'm flushing it all the way here to mark it. So I could just mark the back ones and then mark the front ones and I pull it out. But there's something else you should know. This pad, I believe they want you to keep this out because there is an adhesive here and they want it to stick to this plastic so it's more sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and violate the rules and leave the pad in here and mark the back screws on the pad because I want to keep the pad in even though it may not be as sturdy. Dude, we're, we're, we're going to bolt it in with four bolts. So even though the sticky might not be as great on this rubber pad, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it in. And I'm going to mark right on the pad just the back screws like this. Now I'm going to pull the pad out again and go ahead and remove the center console so I can drill through it. The socket that it came with is a little bit too big for these and turns out that a seven millimeter will work just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these two screws. By far the hardest part of this process is removing the center dash tray. Two screws, no problem. In the front, I had to do a bunch of searching to figure it out. There's three clips here. You gotta pop them off and try not to break them. I'm a cudgel, I hope I don't break them. So back here it lifts up, you lift here. And I put some tape here because even though this tool is plastic and this is what it's for, it's not for the rubber mat. Um, it can still scratch this pretty easily. So I'm gonna go in here like this and cross my fingers and hope I can get this thing off without breaking it. There's one, didn't break, I don't think. Two, three, huh? Dude, I can't tell you how relieved I am. I was so afraid I was gonna break that. And we've got power here. I'm not sure what this thing is for, but there's just a clip right here you just push in on it and pull that thing off it's power to nothing but I assume you can use that to attach a USB port kind of thing which I've seen people do that would be super cool now that I know how to get this thing off I'm gonna do that you can put power back here so you can plug your USB up USB devices directly into it we have a couple options for this we can just mount this directly on top of this like that and screw into it and it'll totally be fine or you could do it all right and you could just cut out the rubber or you could leave the rubber thing out. I'm just gonna mount it on top of the rubber. I'm sure it'll be totally fine and it'll be, you know, pretty dang flush there. It should look, look pretty great. I've marked the holes on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and drill straight through the mat, through the plastic. Should be just peachy. I can see the, my mark right here really well. It's gonna go one. Once you've made sure that the tray is completely clean, you want to go ahead and peel off these adhesive things here to reveal these pads. Once you get the screws all inserted, you throw the washers on from the back side. That's the side they go on. And you throw in all the nuts. Then you just tighten them all up. And they don't actually have to be that tight because they are lock nuts. The hard part's done. Now you just stick this sucker back, pop these clips in in the front. Oh, so much easier going in than coming out. Lift up this rubber mat in the back. Drop these screws back in here, and with your seven millimeter or the standard equivalent, you throw these babies back in. Make sure you reconnect any electronics. If you got speakers back here, the other cable that I had underneath there, which I think is gonna work for USB, I'm super excited. And then you just mount your components, and it looks like this. To see the seven things you didn't know your Ford truck could do, click right up there.